This is Justin Ornell for Baseball Rebellion, and I'm coming to you from It's Baseball. It's late here Wednesday night, but I wanted to make sure I made this video um, in the midst of the playoffs. The Dodgers just won. I'm super excited. That's my former organization. I'm wearing my Dodgers shirt here. Um, I got my playoff beard rocking. I may try to go as long as Brian Wilson, as long as the Dodgers keep winning. We'll see. Okay, but there's something that I've seen this postseason among pitchers and the group of pitchers um, that we've, or the postseason has assembled to where I see these guys who have absolutely been dominating hitters have a kind of a common thread. And the common thread that I see is the way that these guys are taking the ball out of their gloves and allowing their arm to get into a healthy, repeatable, and efficient uh, position to accelerate into rotation. And what I'm talking about here with the arm swing is, basically, the arm swing is, if I'm throwing this direction, it's how I bring my arm out of the glove and I move into my throw, okay? And there is a vast array of ways that guys have shown they do it. Some have been successful, but there are patterns that prove to be the most successful. And what I wanna to talk to you about first is when you bring the ball out of the glove, first and foremost, the arm has got to be relaxed. Don't start off the whole delivery with your arm being really tense. Don't be a guy who shoots it out with his hand or goes back with your elbow. Allow the arm to work with your body as it moves. It's really easy. Just drop the ball out and allow it to move as your hips move towards the target. That being said, as you allow your arm to begin to fall out of the glove, as a right-handed thrower, I wanna make sure that my hands are facing more towards third base, left-handed thrower more towards first base. And the biggest thing, and I'll comment on, um, let's say Friday night when Kershaw and Waka gear up to throw, they both do this extremely well. They're very good and allowing their arm to stay in this plane of the body and not get too far behind the body. Once we start getting too far with the elbow, with the hand, it starts creating some pressure, some tension within the shoulder and elbow, then we just want to avoid it. So as we're moving down the mound and our arm is continually, gradually moving towards a point of acceleration, we don't want to feel any tension in the arm. We want it to be free, we want it to be relaxed, okay? And part of that is, is learning, but when I come out of the glove, there's a couple things that can kind of keep my arm in this good position. One analogy that I use to teach uh, my students is, if you think about a, a half pipe in skating, okay, a half pipe kind of makes this shape here. It's like a big U, okay? So when I bring the ball out of the glove, you can think about, I'll kind of go from this direction. If my elbow and the ball are two skaters, let's say I'm, I'm breaking from here, okay? If they're two skaters at the top of the half pipe, then as they drop out, they're gonna go down the half pipe and then come back up to the other side, okay? It's just one brief way. I'll also give a roller coaster analogy where I'm going down the slope of the roller coaster and then back up. But either way, I want my arm to work together and as I approach the point to where my body begins to rotate, my arm should fire from here. I don't want it back here. I don't want my hand climbing too early, okay? So an efficient arm swing has to be something that works with our delivery and allows the pitcher, allows the thrower the opportunity to accelerate properly. Now Clayton Kershaw and Walk, I'll just use these two as example. Granky's also unbelievable at this. They consistently, as they break, get their hand and their arm here in the flow of their delivery. Okay? Now part of that means that if I'm supposed to stay in here, then I can't over rotate my shoulders even if I have a good arm swing. There it is back there, which eventually may mean okay, I've got to do some sort of this to open up and my arm may look like this, okay? So some of these guys are super consistent and if you really look at the guys who don't walk a lot and they're consistently 
have great fastball command, they're in the zone, okay? They're, all of their arm swings are very consistent as they go into rotation, okay? And this is probably one of the most valuable, excuse me, valuable components of how you start because if I initially break my hand to get into this position here, okay, this is hard to make up from, okay? So my body's gotta start doing actions that work against itself, okay? So if my arm can stay in a very consistent plane, okay, here in front of the body, when I'm ready to fire and I'm ready to open the hips and the core, then my arm should rotate up properly and then I go into acceleration, okay? Now one final thought here is, if you're thinking about the arm swing and where it should end up, there's one final note, okay? So the arm swing should allow your arm your hand, your elbow, to kind of get somewhere in relationship to here, okay? The elbow is going to be below the shoulder, okay? And as the hip rotates, this is the action of the hand and arm. So basically it goes up to vertical behind the head, okay? The trunk begins to rotate into acceleration. I don't want my elbow to get too high. I don't want my hand to get too high. This is the relationship this should happen. And guys, to where that happens for them, they all have efficient arm swings, okay? And that's what you're seeing in the postseason. This is what you're gonna see when Kershaw faces Waka um, in game six. It's gonna be exciting. I'm looking forward to watching it. Um, I hope this answers some questions about how to create, start, and potentially uh, really stay consistent with your arm swing. So again, this is Justin Orndorff for Baseball Rebellion. Thanks for listening.